What we're trying to do, of course, is document the smell following the analysis. So we create a list of the chemicals um, that are responsible for the smell, as much as we know, and we also do a documentation of the sensory analysis of that smell, and that involves people's descriptions of the smell, mm -hmm. so adjectives and nouns, um, their impressions about the intensity of the smell, and their subjective evaluation of whether the smell is pleasant or not. So preserving a smell goes beyond the chromatograms that you've captured. It goes beyond the chemical information, right? We preserve one side of the smell, which is the volatile organic compounds that are responsible for it. But we also want to preserve the human experience of mm -hmm. it, because we are talking about smells in the context of our experience of heritage, of course. I mean, it's, this tells you how important smell is in our perception of cultural heritage, doesn't it? Because if you enter a museum or a gallery and you look at the painting, you are reduced to a visual experience, aren't you? Whereas if you enter a space uh, like the Wren's Library, you're immediately hit by this smell of history and your perception of cultural heritage is immedi immediately takes you to a different level, doesn't it? And, and that's an experience that's worth preserving. Yes, yes it is. And you said, you know, it's, you can smell history uh, and that's a very appropriate description because you can see history and then you can smell it. And a historic space like this is one of the few places where you can actually smell in context. Uh, in a museum or a gallery, you often are presented with a little box where you lift the lid and then you smell and somehow that is built into the narrative of the collection mm -hmm. and the visit. But historic houses and historic other types of historic spaces provide a unique opportunity to experience heritage with all your senses. In 2008, when the Institute for Sustainable Heritage was asked by the Dean, of Ch Dean and Chapter of St. Paul's to do environmental research into this particular library built by Wren, uh, we found out that the level of environmental pollution from the outside, um, i.e. traffic generated pollution, was actually very low. But the level of volatile organic compounds, the concentration of those compounds was very high. And of course, as you enter the library and you smell this intensive aroma of decaying books, it becomes immediately apparent why this is the case. And it's the books that degrade that lead to the production of those volatile organic compounds. Some people say that it's the smell of dying books that we're smelling, and I find that just absolutely fascinating. Yeah. For our project, of course, this library was a perfect case study when we wanted to look for a, a smell that revealed its cultural significance because many people considered it um, relevant and had many memories and stories attached to it. So it was the perfect, the, the, the smell of historic books was in a way the perfect heritage smell to start validating the framework we had developed. We had to find a space where that smell of books in context was um, ready to be analyzed. And this library was great because not only you can smell a very smell the books the leather the furniture very intensely but also it provides a very interesting journey from the moment you come into St Paul's from a very busy street with the fumes of the traffic and the food smells and then you go through the church with the incense smells and then you open mm. this door which is often kept shut and opened by appointment only to reveal this very intense unique space <laughs> What I like about this project is how we come at it from very different perspectives. I, I, I 
came into this project as a chemist interested in the analysis of volatile organic compounds and how they are emitted by historic paper. And we know pretty well by now how different types of paper emit different uh, amounts of chemical mm -hmm. compounds. We can link the smell of vanillin to the content of lignin in historic paper. So we can provide that conservation argument uh, in terms of how books should be kept better or perhaps conserved in a different way such that they last for longer. But of course that conservation argument is, um, is, is a counter argument to VOC production which are important to visitors as they perceive the historical nature of this library. Isn't it?